welcome at the second tutorial of creating a to-do list in JavaScript. In this video, we will be focusing on creating an array with multiple objects, and this will represent our different tasks in our to-do list. So we are going to use objects as a data source for our to-do list. So first of all, let's start by creating a new variable in our script called tasks. And we are going to create some test data. So I'm going to create an array with two objects. Um, the task can be coding and checked is false. And the second object can be task JavaScript and checked is equal to true. All right, so these two objects represent two uh, tasks in our to-do list. And this is the way how we are going to save our tasks also in our uh, backend of our application. So. I started with some test data and we are going to use this data to represent some tasks in our to-do list. All right, so let's start by showing our tasks in our HTML. I'm going to create a new function, show tasks. Um, and in this function, I will actually do quite the same that we did here but only not just for one task. We want every task in our array to be appended to our unordered list. So we're going to start with a for each um, because I want to loop through all my tasks. And I am going to um, say this is a single task. So now if I print a task, this should print every individual task. So let's test this in our console. Um, yeah, we have to still execute this function. So I'm going to say this dot uh, show tasks. And there we have it. Our tasks are shown separately. Um, so now what are we going to do is getting the values out of it and appending them to our HTML. So first of all, let's copy this piece of code because we want to clone our template again. We want to change the text of the template and we want to change um, the inputs. So we're going to search the inputs, the checkbox. We want to change that to checked whenever, um, we have checked to true in our task. So to get the value of our task, maybe this is not such a good name because we already have task here. I'm going to change this to text. Yes, so um, when I print here task.text, we get the text of our tasks. So that is what I need in my paragraph. So I'm going to um, change the text of my paragraph by using task.text. And um, for the input, I want uh, the checkbox to be checked if uh, the property checked is uh, True. So if task dot uh, checked, if it's true, then this will be executed. Then I'm going to change the inputs attribute checked to true. Okay, and as last thing, we have to append our template again to our HTML. So this is 
also the same append our item to the to do's and like you can see the different tasks are added uh, we're only missing our class there is no line through here so there needs to be an extra line uh, we need to add uh, is done to the list item itself uh, the list item itself should be the variable template so let's um, try to add the class um, for to be sure let's print what template is so yeah this is our list item so we need to add a class here template add class is done all right so now it has a line through um, so this is the way that we can show to do items when we have some array of objects with the value and the properties of the different tasks so this is great so because we can now load data from an array we can load data from a database um, but first things first we also have to update our functions here because whenever i add a task it will be appended to um, the list here but it's not added to our array so i want all the tasks to be linked to the data array so whenever i add a task i'm going to push a new object to our uh, array so we need a new array let's say const um, new task is an object with a text equal to the task and checked is always false in the beginning so we are going to append this new task to our tasks array push our new task so now this task will be appended at the end of the array every time we fill in our or fill in our form so let we can test this by printing it maybe um, this dot task with an s um, for example yeah or just something else one two three add and now you can see we have three tasks one is coding one is javascript and the last was one two three so this function is now updated delete tasks we need to um find our task in our array so if i delete the second one i want the second item of the array to be removed so um we're going to use the index function of jquery here and i think we're going to use the splice function to remove one item um, of an array so first of all we need um, the index so i'm going to split this code in two we have our task like so and we will say task remove so this code remains the same but i also want a index which is equal to the task index so this just gives the uh, index of our list item so this is the second list item of our ul so task.index will give uh, uh, a two or no it will give a a one i think let's see index whenever i delete one yeah it will give a one so this is perfect um because it matches with our array yeah? the, the, the second item here 
will delete the second item in our array by using this uh, index number. So we're going to call uh, our tasks and we will use the splice function. Um, yeah, and normally we first gave a start number, like we can see a start number. So we want it to be at index and then uh, delete count. So how many we want to delete at this position. So index, and we just want to delete one value. We want to delete one task at this position of the array. Um, all right, let's see. Let's print our array, this, this dot task, yeah. So I add one, one, two, three, and I remove one. And we have coding JavaScript. I remove this one. We have coding one, two, three. So, all right, this seems to work great. Um, up next is our toggle done. So in toggle done, we also need to get the index, um, but in this function, we can chain it. So I can actually ask the index just at the end and save it in a variable. The reason why I can't save it in this function is because we are working with the remove function. If I would remove the task before asking for the index, um, the index of course doesn't exist because the item has been removed. That's why we have to split this and first ask the index and then remove it in our, in our HTML. So we also can remove it in our data array. All right, so here we should have our index now. Um, so maybe it's more readable to split this code into pieces and print index. We have toggle, so toggle gives me one, toggle give me, gives me zero. So this is perfect, this is working. We just need um, our, I see that our checkboxes aren't working anymore. So I think this has to do with our prevent default functions because the click on our label won't uh, trigger anything anymore. So le let's see if this is our problem. Yeah, so we need to find another workaround. Um, I'm just going to change the uh, value of the checked attribute of our in inputs every time we, we click it. So let's select our um, e dot current target, which is our label. And I'm going to find a input and I want the property or attribute I don't know which the modern function is, but they kind of do the same. I think the property is the, the model, modern one. Um, so I want to get the checked property. Let's save this in a variable is checked is equal to, and let's print this is checked. All right. So I will check and I receive false. I will check it again and I get false again because it stays false forever. Um, but this is working of it looks like it's working. So um, we need to invert it. So we actually need this code again. Only this time we are going to change the checked property by uh, the inverted value of the, the property. So this will invert the value we, we get here and save it into our property. So whenever our checked property is true, 
I will say now make it false. When it's false, I will say make it true. This way we can easily invert our properties. So, or a value or just a true or false. So now we get false, now we get true, true, false. Great. Um, I'm gonna print it maybe here and see if it's updating correctly. So now it's true and now it's false. So yeah, we can use this variable but it needs to be inverted like here. Um, and we are gonna use this, the same tactic to change our property in our array. So that's the last thing we need to do. So firstly, I'm going to select our tasks array. I want the correct uh, task, so I'm going to get my task by using the index variable I, I obtained here. And I'm going to change the checked property to um, the inverted is checked variable. So I'm going to print the inverted version here. So now this should be true and now it should be false and it should also update in our array. So let's see if it, if it is actually working. Now it's true, encoding is true. Now it's false, encoding is false. All right, great, so we made it and we also updated a, a bug because our checkboxes weren't working anymore. Um, so that is updated now. Um, and that's it. We have all our functions, um, toggle, toggle task or toggle done, delete task, add task, will now all update our data array. So now all our functions are adjusting our array, which means we can start creating our backend and saving this array into a db.json file in this example. But later on, this can of course be a database. See you in the next video.